Hold. We gather with the church throughout the world. Eternal God, Jesus Christ. of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be
exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate the divine mysteries with exaltation and for so great a victory. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, so earth in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Holy Church, exult in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that with full devotion of heart and mind and voice we should praise the invisible God and the only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his precious blood redeemed us from bondage to the ancient sin. For this indeed is the Paschal Feast, in which the true Lamb is slain, by whose blood the doorposts of the faithful are made holy. This is the night this is the night in which in ancient times you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel, and led them dry shot through the sea. This is the night. This is the night in which the darkness of sin has been purged away by the rising brightness. This is the night. This is the night. In which all who believe in Christ are rescued from evil and the gloom of sin are renewed in grace and are restored to holiness. This is the night, this is the night, in which, breaking the chains of death, Christ arises from hell in triumph. Oh, truly night, truly blessed, which alone was worthy to know the time and the hour in which Christ arose again from hell. This is the night, this is the night, of which it is written, the night is as clear as the day, and then shall my night be turned into day. The holiness of this night puts to flight the deeds of wickedness, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Therefore, in this night of grace, receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving, for the light of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of this candle. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished, even when its light is divided and borrowed. 
For it is fed by the melting wax, which the bees, your servants, have made for the substance of this candle. This is the night. This is the night. In which heaven and earth are joined, things human and things divine. We therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle, burning to the honor of your name, will continue to vanquish the darkness of night and be mingled with the lights of heaven. May Christ the morning star find it burning, that morning star who never sets, that morning star who, rising from the grave, faithfully sheds light on the whole human race. And we pray, O oh God, rule, govern, and preserve with your continual protection your whole church giving us peace in this time of our paschal rejoicing. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. <coughs> God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, 
plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the, all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created.
You may stand. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air, also male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him, 
to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening. And there was a beak, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and went and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the coverings of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth.
supreme among the nations, supreme on the God, strength of the powerless and light in all darkness, look in mercy upon your church, a wonderful and sacred mystery, that it may be an ark of peace in the midst of chaos. Let the world, let the whole world come to see that what was fallen is being raised up, that what was old is being made new, and that all things are being restored to wholeness through the one from whom they first took being. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the, word of the, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice.
Once you are at my right hand, I shall stand firm. God and Father of all the faithful, you promised your servant Abraham that he would become the father of many nations, and through this gift of faith, you increase your chosen people throughout the world. Form us anew by the death of your Son, that we may joyfully accept the new life of grace given through him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For would not it have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness? But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm. See the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. (coughs) The angel of God, who was going before the Israelites' army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched his hand out over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. 
The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch your hand out over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched his hand out over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work of the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. It's 
O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, by the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, a sign for us of the salvation offered to everyone by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of earth may partake in the salvation of the Israelites and together dance on the safe side of the sea through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spread your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be the that goes out from my mouth and shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord. Deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Holy God, you created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that rejoicing in your covenant of mercy, we may bring forth abundant fruit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand, beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is all that live. O simple, o simple ones, learn prudence, acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness among the paths of justice, endowing with wealth those who love me and filling their treasures. To those without sense, she says, come eat my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight.
abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. O God, our wisdom, teacher of truth, you fill your house by continuing to call all peoples into the way of insight. With your food and drink, sustain us in the path of justice, and by your love, watch over those whom you have called through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and, having you, and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God.
God of holiness and mercy, in the dying and rising of Christ, you have established a new covenant of reconciliation for us all. Cleanse our hearts and give us a new spirit, that by your saving grace we may live as your people through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh came upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our host, hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. to my appeal. You are faithful, you are just, give answer. Do not call your servant to judgment, for no one is just in your sight. Lord, I remember the days that are past. I ponder all your words. I muse on what your hand has wrought, and to you I stretch out my hands. Like a parched land, my soul thirsts for you. Lord of My 
spirit fails within me. Do not hide your face, lest I become like those in the grave. Rescue me, Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. For your name's sake, Lord, save my life. In your justice, save my soul from distress. Living God, by the death and the resurrection of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Breathe into us your life-giving spirit, that receiving the gifts of word and sacrament, we may live in the hope of all your blessings to come through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hand grow weak. Then they cried out to the Lord, please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah and threw him into the sea. I'm on the wrong page. Let me regroup. Two pages at once. Uh, the Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At that time, when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. remembered 
Sovereign God, by the resurrection of your Son, you offer us victory in our struggles, a city for our refuge, the joy of the beloved, and festival celebration. Gather all the outcast into your mercy and restore your whole creation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, what is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea 
ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. O God of deliverance, you saved Jonah through the waters of death, and after three days you brought him to new life. Speak to us by this sign, and call us to repentance, that we may heed the voice of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. 
Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. O God, the life of all the earth, throughout the ages you sustain and comfort your people, and you clothe us with beauty and joy. Anoint us with the spirit of the resurrection, that we may extend your healing to all that is broken in your world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces 
assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hands, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound, into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, but I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together 
and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their tunics were not harmed. And not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's commands and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Almighty and eternal God, the only hope of the world, 
By the proclamation of your prophets, you declare to us the word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized, that strengthened by your presence, we may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, 
And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen Hallelujah! You may sit. A lone woman approaches the most powerful man in the known world. She holds her head high, befitting her status and rank, because the fire and anger in her burns. I have a complaint, she says. A complaint, he asks, amused for now. About what do you bring a complaint, and why should I address it? You will listen to my complaint, she responds, earning herself a cold stare from the man in front of her, and you will address it. The audacity of her words, their boldness, their insulting presumption. Who is this woman, he thinks, but allows her to proceed. Our governor is a tyrant and unfit to govern. Is that so, he replies. He keeps order, he keeps taxes flowing, 
and he ensures peace. What makes you think he is unfit to govern? He condemns the innocent to death and incites riots with his callous disregard for the traditions of those he governs. He inflames tensions and threatens punishment for any who disagree with him. So far, nothing she says has any effect on the man. This was beneath him, and his patience is running out. He embezzled money from his charges for his own personal gain, and when the people protested, he had them beaten. If you do not address his behavior, there will be more riots, more death, and they will be on your hands. Not on my hands, he answers, already losing interest. I am not there, am I? He waves his hand to dismiss her. You have given your complaint. I will consider it. I am not finished, comes the reply. Now the man is angry. You are, he says, whether you leave of your own free will or in chains is up to you. I will leave of my own free will, she answers, once I have finished my duty, for I have one last message to give. And that is when he notices she holds an egg. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth a man attested by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among us, as we ourselves know. This man, handed over to your governor according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, he crucified and killed with hands outside of the law. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hid their faces. He was despised, held of no account. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, your justice, he was taken away. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. This Jesus God raised up, and, and of that all of us are witnesses. The God of my ancestors, of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, the God of Sarah, of Rebekah, of Leah, of Rachel, of Bilhah and Zilpah, of Dinah and her brothers, of their descendants, and all who will come after us have glorified Jesus, handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, your governor, who killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. I am a witness. For early on the first day of the week after his death, while it was still dark, I came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from it and that his body was no longer laid there. I ran and told my brothers, who raced to the tomb and saw that what I had said was true. And I wept and looked in and saw two angels, messengers of God, sitting there. In my grief, I told them that someone had taken away the body of my teacher and friend. But I turned, and there, standing before me, was Jesus himself. He called me by my name, and I recognized him. And he told me to tell my brothers that he was ascending to his father and ours, his God and ours. And now I tell you, Tiberius, Julius, Caesar, Augustus, 
that I have seen the Lord. And those who share in his death now share in his resurrection. The power of death is broken. It has lost its sting. Sin and evil, enforced by your hand and in your name, are toothless and weak, beaten by the Lord of life, the Son of God. The Pax Romana has fallen. The peace of God now reigns. For in days and years to come, the news of his victory over sin, death, and the devil will travel far and wide, beyond your ken, O emperor. Women will fight back against oppression. Those who are poor will rise up and take back what has been stolen from them. Nations will fall under the weight of their own injustices, and those who are oppressed will be vindicated. The imprisoned will be set free. Those who are judged lesser than because of their bodies, their hearts, whom they love, whom they are, will find peace and equity. Those who suffer because of their fellow human beings will find relief. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And there is nothing you can do about it. There is nothing you can do, O Emperor, to stop it. Tiberius sat brooding, seething with anger. He listens, and when she has finished, he laughs. Foolish woman, he says, that is quite a tale you have spun for me. Very entertaining. And he begins to clap, smirking at the lowly creature before him. But there is as much a chance of a human being returning to life and all that you have said coming to pass as there is for the egg in your hand to turn red, which I would love to see. I am no foolish woman, she answers, except a fool for Christ. I am Mary, the Magdalene, the first to share the good news of the resurrection, the first bearer of the gospel, the apostle to the apostles. But so that you may know that not even you, O emperor, can prevent these things or stand in the way of God's justice and mercy and vindication in the resurrection of our Lord, your request has been granted. And he beheld, and the egg in her hand was indeed red. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia!
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of our baptism into Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us. Your waters are around us. Your waters are above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We, we do, do, and we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Sustain us with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen.
On this most holy light night, our Lord has acted, raised with Christ. Let us boldly offer our prayers for the whole people of God. Let your holy church rejoice, for Christ has risen. We rejoice with the newly baptized. Renew us in our baptismal covenant and put your spirit within us. Risen, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All creation bears your image and sings your praise. Preserve the works of your hands, day and night, sea and land, plants and trees, birds and every living creature. Inspire in us a renewed care for the world that you have called very good. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You shatter tyranny and oppression and liberate your people from bondage. Rise up with might against tyrants and dictators. Grant wisdom to world leaders that your reign of justice and freedom comes to all. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You break the chains of death and bring us up from the grave. Enter places of despair and breathe new life where hope wanes. Reconcile fractured relationships. Rescue us from all that ensnares us. Enliven our dry bones so that we can live. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give your people a heart of flesh in place of a heart of stone. Soften our hearts to the needs around us. We especially ask that you be with those on our prayer list and those that we now name to you, both aloud and silently in our hearts. Strengthen the, mercy, the ministries of this congregation and turn us outward to love and serve our neighbors. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that Christ is raised and dies no more. With thanksgiving, we lift our voices with the saints of every place and time around God's eternal throne. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
You may stand. God of glory, receive the gifts and offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and the resurrection which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when, with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Holy and benevolent God, receive our prayers and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing until, needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Come to the table.
You may stand. <coughs> the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, Share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.